Hey everyone, welcome back to The Design Den. Today we're gonna to be talking about the most exciting part about designing a level. Just kidding, it's actually not the most exciting part. It's, uh, it's metrics. What are they? Why are they important? Who are they important for? All things we're gonna find out today. And we'll jump into my World War II project in Unreal, and I'll show you how I set up my metrics and hopefully give you some helpful tips on how you can make the process more interesting and help your game become the next game of the year. All right, let's do it. So yeah, for me, metrics are not super exciting. In fact, I always find the process boring, uncreative, and super tedious. But the payoff is great and that players enjoy a more consistent and intuitive experience. And eventually for you as the designer, you won't even think about the metrics anymore. It'll be like you see the matrix of the metrics. So what are metrics? Metrics are set guidelines that designers follow to create consistent and proportionate content. These guidelines make up the sense of scale and a level and create patterns in gameplay that result in a fluid experience for players. And here are some things that you make metrics out of. You've got your standard building or architectural dimensions like door sizes and windows and wall thickness and all that stuff. Then you've got combat metrics like cover scale, cover spacing, cover distribution, combat ranges or engagement distances for short, medium and long range encounters. All super important, right? Whoa, but what about ladders? Okay, so why are metrics important and who are they important for? Okay, so for one, metrics are of course super important for you as a designer, right? As the person who's building the foundation of the game or level, it's great to establish a pattern and to standardize it so you're working efficiently and building something that's really organized. Cool. But what about the player? What do metrics do for them? Okay, you want players to understand, for example, what is cover and what isn't cover. What walls they can climb, versus what walls they can't climb. What you want to happen is for these patterns to unknowingly or knowingly build up in a player's mind so they never second guess if they can take cover here or if this wall is the right height or not. These patterns turn into intuition. You want players to have intuition because the experience will be fluid and lacking any weird frustration or hiccups from them always second guessing simple choices. Okay, so they're important for us, they're important for the player. Who else? Your teammates your coworkers, your drinking buddies, your frenemies on the art team. Let's say you request, uh, I don't know, a cover asset or a door, and the art team isn't already familiar with the game's metrics, or you don't let them know or put that information somewhere, then chances are they're not going to deliver something that matches the metrics, and then no one on the team can use it, and they have to go back and change it anyway. It's a waste of time. All right, let's jump into Unreal and see what I've got going on for my metrics. All right, so I'm using Unreal's default capsule scale for the player character, which has a half height of 88 centimeters or Unreal units. So 176 centimeters tall and a radius of 34 centimeters. I've also purchased a World War II weapons pack off the Unreal Marketplace. I'll put the link for that in the video description. It's okay quality for what I'm doing here, and I would recommend it for a student or small personal project. So far, I've created some weapon logic to get them firing, reloading, aiming down the site, and have primary and secondary slots. I also set up some vaulting logic in all of the blend spaces and state machines for each weapon, which all help to dial in the player movement. The player movement is important early on because it's the foundation for what we base a lot of the metrics off of. I also set up a metrics gym and separated each metric type into their own areas with some text labels to make it easier for me to know what's going on, and for other teammates if I had any. I first start by building the crouch cover height, because I know I'm going to use it a lot and it dominoes into a lot of other metrics. Since I know I'm going to have enemies that take cover on the same assets as the player, I need to make sure there'll be a comfortable line of sight on the enemies and that the enemies will be able to clearly fire back at the player. Now, I already know what animations and mesh I'm going to use for the enemies, so I created these static mesh actors to use as reference. These are also useful when you're blocking out combat spaces and want to quickly mock up the distribution and composition of the enemies before you script them out. Now when the enemies are in cover, I prefer it when I can see most of, if not all of the enemy's head and part of the shoulders or arms. This way it's not too much of a challenge, but it also takes a little bit of focus and accuracy, which I definitely want to enforce. Alright, so 90 centimeters seems to be the sweet spot for this. It doesn't obstruct the player's field of view or clip the weapon, so there's my crouch cover height. When setting up all of the building metrics, I essentially do the same thing for each metric. It's always about what feels good for the player. I don't want players to get caught up on corners, frames, or bump their heads on anything when they jump. The navigation needs to be super smooth throughout the space. 
I also want to make sure that firing to and from higher stories feels good. Looking up in FPS games is extremely uncomfortable, so it's good to keep in mind or even have attack angle metrics if you feel that's necessary. I also want to quickly talk about the buffer zone. The buffer zone is a set measurement above the max height or width that you want to steer away from ever using. When players are in the heat of battle or quickly scanning an area for options, you don't want them to try to climb up a wall or a fence that looks close to the height of what they've jumped on before, but now this time you don't let them. So you want to make things super clear by never building anything that's within that buffer zone. Engagement distances are also nice to figure out before you start blocking on a level. Since I actually have some of the enemies prototyped, I'm able to get a better idea of how things feel. Once everything is set, I make some diameter references. Now again, these come in super handy when blocking out a space to check and validate the engagement distances. To make it easy while blocking out levels, it's common for people to set up small areas off to the side where they have a big plate of all the prefabs or groups of assets that are built using the metrics. And to finish things off, you can spend time making a cool, polished metric sheet that you can share with your team. And you can bet that they will never look at it. All right, so that just about wraps it up for today. And now that I have my metrics set up, I can start to focus on more of the standard FPS gameplay that I need. And I can get going on fleshing out some of those NPC behaviors. All stuff I will cover in the next few episodes. So if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe and follow us on Twitter. Now there's probably things I missed about metrics. And if you think so, please comment below or join the Discord because it's gonna help someone out and I wanna know too. And thank you so much to all the server boosters. You really make the Discord a better place for everybody else. And I cannot be more thankful. All right, everyone, take care, have fun, and I'll see you right back here next time in the design den.